Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we are going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is sequential digits. So by definition, a integer has sequential digits if and only if each digit inside the number is more than the previous digit. So this is a sequence 1, 2, 3 because every digit, so for example 2 is one more than its previous digit, 3 is one more than its previous digit. So this is a sequence. Similarly, this is also a sequence. So for example, 2, 3, 5 will won't be a sequence because 5 has a difference to which is not one more than its previous. So a task is to return a sorted list of all integers within the range low and high both inclusive that have sequential digits. So this is our left limit and this is our right limit and we have to find the numbers which have sequences and we have to find the sequential numbers between that range. Now let's take a look at these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take these examples. So if you observe we have to get sequential numbers right and the sequential numbers are 1 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 and so on up to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 because this is the max sequential number you can form with this constraint and you know and you can get the rest of the sequential numbers from this single sequential number so let's take that single sequential number so let's take the first example low is equal to 100 and high is equal to 300. So what is the first sequential number? It is 1. The second sequential number is 1, 2. The third sequential number is 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3 falls between the range 100 and 300. So how are you deciding that? You are taking the length of these limits and comparing it to check how much substring we have to take. So that is the first hint. You have to calculate the length of these variables. The length of low is 3 and length of high is also 3. So we know our sequential numbers is going to have length 3 only. So that is the fixed window and this gives us a hint that we have to use a fixed window and perform sliding window on this input string. So let's do the sliding window technique. So we find our sliding window and window size is fixed with 3. So we start with 3 and take that so we get 1, 2, 3 and this is a string. So convert this into an integer using parsint method so 1 2 3 is between this range so add this into our result so i create a result list and it has 1 2 3 in it and the next window remove this digit and add this digit so this is our next window so it is equal to 2 3 4 convert this into an integer 234 check if it is within the range yes so add this into the list so 2 3 4 is also added now remove the left and add right and now the string is 3 4 5 convert it into an integer Check if it is within the range, no. So it is not a probable answer, so we don't add it into a list. Now go forward. So this is our next string. So 456 is our next string. Convert it into an integer, 456. Check if it is within the range, no. So it won't be added. Similarly, all the next strings are also more than that, so none of them will be added. And this is our final list, which is matching here. So one more thing to observe is that you take two loops, right? So outer loop, let us say if it is i. So the range of i is going to be from, it will start with low length and it will go till high length because our probable answer is going to be within this range only. So if the length of this is 3 and the length of this is 3, our fixed window is also going to be of size 3. And in this case, the length of low is 4 and length of high is 5. So first we are going to find all the four digit numbers and then the outer loop will be incremented by 1 and then we check the 5 digit numbers. So that is the function of outer loop. And the inner loop, let's call it j. It will start from 0 because we start our iterations from 0. And it will go until here. So because this is the last length and this is the string and this will give you the last window. And window you can find out by applying substring on this by the limits right because we start from here and right plus left will give you the right index. And this won't be increment included in the substring. So for example, 1, 2, 3. So 0 plus 3 is this. But this index won't be added in our substring because substring right parameter won't be included. So we get this substring. And we have to stop here. And the right limit of this is going to be str.length minus left. Instead, if you go till the end, you will take the fixed length here and it will go out of bounds and you'll get an e error. So you have to stop the inner loop at this index str.length minus left. Now let's implement the same steps in a Java program. So coming to the function here, this is the function name and we have to return a list of integers and the limits low and high are given as parameters. Now let's start off by creating a sliding window. So we have to create a string variable, right? I'm going to name it 
digits and this digits is going to have digits from 1 through 9. So from here this will be the max value and we have to find our sequential numbers from this string. So we have to perform the sliding window on this string. Now let's create our output. This is going to be a list. So let me create a list. I'm going to name it result. And now I have to find the length of low and high. And these are integers. And you can find the length of integers by writing a helper function. But a short trick will be that to convert this integer into a string and finding the length of that string. Because if you take this case, the length of low is 4 and length of high is 5. So first we are going to get all the 4 digit numbers. And then we have to go to the 5 digit numbers. For that we have to increment the outer loop by 1 and when the outer loop is incremented we will find our 5 digit number which is also within this range. So first I am going to create a variable. I am going to name it low length and find the length of this integer variable. So I am going to use the string dot value of method. So this will return a string and you can find the length of that by using the length method. Now let's do the same for the high variable. I will copy this once and paste it. I am going to name it high length and change the variable from low to high and this will give me the length of the high limit. Now I am going to use the outer loop. So I am going to name it left and it will start from low length. So low length will be a first. So this will define the size of the sliding window. So first in this case we are going to find all the four digit numbers. So low length is four and it will be less than or equal to high length. So left is less than or equal to high length and left will keep incrementing by one. So this is the outer loop and the inner loop I'm going to name it right. So this will start from 0 and we're going to use this right variable as index to iterate through the string on which we're going to perform sliding window. So there is no need to iterate until the entire length. So for in this example, we're going to start with the first three digits. Then this will be the next uh, window. Then this will be the next window. Then this will be the next window. Then this is the next window. Then this is the next window. And finally, this will be the next window. And the window size is constant, right? will have the same length. So this is a fixed window. So if we go here, there are only two digits, but our window size is three. So it will go out of bounds. So that is why we're going to stop here. And how are you going to find this? You can find this by digits dot length will give you the entire length minus left. And you have to include that index because we need to stop here. Digits dot length is nine and left is equal to three. Nine minus three is six. And this is the sixth index. And right will keep incrementing by one. So this is right. So this variable name might not fit what it is doing, but I have named the outer loop as left and inner loop as right. Now we have to find the substring. So initially we have, so this will be our initial substring. So how are you going to form it? The left limit is going to start from right. So right is equal to zero. So it will start from here. And how much you have to go? Right plus left. Right plus left is equal to three. So this is the third index. But in substring, you won't take this. It will return this. So let me create a string variable. I'm going to name it sequential string. Perform the substring method on the input string digits. So digits dot substring. And the left limit is right. And the right limit is right plus left. Now this is the string. And we have to check if it is present between the range low and high, both inclusive. But these are integer variables. So we have to convert the string into an integer. So let me create a variable called num and use the integer dot parsint method to convert the string into an integer. Now we have to check if this num which is an integer variable is present between this range. If it is present we have to add this num into our result. So if num is greater than or equal to low and if num is less than or equal to high then we can add it into our result. So result dot add of num and this for loop will happen for all the elements and we have a result here. So outside the for loop, you can return the result, which is the expected output. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. If we take the first example, so if we take the first example, this is the first string, which is between the range. The next string is this. It is also within the range. And the next string is 345 and it is higher than this. So there won't be any answers forward, but this logic will check for all the strings. It will check for this string, it will check for this string, it will check for this string, but none of them will be added. So you can place an additional check here. So if num is greater than high, then we can break the loop 
because we won't find any more answers to be added into a result. So this won't increase the time complexity because we already are getting 0 milliseconds. So this can optimize our solution a little more. So if we submit this, we're still going to get 100% faster. So the time complexity of this approach is O of 1 because although we are using a sliding window using two for loops, because we're going to perform the sliding window on a constant length and the length is 9 and the for loop is going to iterate from low length and low is going to have max 10 power 9 digits so lowest length and highest length are also going to be max this variable so the loop will run for constant number of times since this loop is going to run for max a constant number of time we can declare our output to be o of 1 and the space complexity is also going to be o of 1 because we are only using our output list which won't be counted into our space complexity and even if you are counting that as space complexity and the higher limit is this so there will be max 64 sequential digits and this will be the max sequential digit so the sequential digits start from 1 and this will be the max sequential digit and there will be maximum 64 sequential digits which will be added into the result so that is also a constant that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video